Hi, I'm Jeremy Cobasa, Director of Music and Liturgy here at St. Benedict Parish. And I'm sporting my COVID hair in this video to talk to you about something that you've probably heard about either on social media or, of course, in the news. Um, you've probably heard already that the Archdiocese of Chicago is currently working on opening our parishes and our churches, uh, however, in a limited capacity. And as we prepare to open our church here at St. Benedict, um, several have asked about what this might mean for our music ministry, uh, both as far as the music goes at Mass and for our upcoming concert series. First, let me say that I don't have all the answers. However, I can give you an idea of what our plans are as they currently stand based on the information that we have in this moment. I do want to say that all of the changes that we're making to the upcoming season uh, are made with the health and safety of our community in mind. We will comply with both the guidelines set forth by the Archdiocese of Chicago and the state of Illinois, and in some cases will actually go further than what those guidelines recommend. However, we are still learning and adapting, so I just want to say thank you in advance for your patience and your understanding during these extraordinary times. Let's first talk about the music at Mass, uh, more, more specifically the safety of singing. Um, many of you have probably heard about what happened at the beginning of the pandemic. There were several choirs that decided to go forward with rehearsals, and there were outbreaks of COVID-19 after those rehearsals. Unfortunately, in some cases, some of the, choral, the choir members became uh, gravely ill and even lost their lives. Uh, and that really started to open our eyes as to the possibility of this virus being spread through singing. Uh, the current information says that it is possibly spread through what are called aerosolized particles. When we speak, when we talk, and especially when we sing, uh, we create what are called little water droplets that get sent through the air. Um, and because of the nature of singing, the fact that we take a lot of deep breaths, and the, the fact that we're uh, projecting our voices over large areas, um, it is very likely that unfortunately it can spread the virus even more so than it would be spread if we were speaking to one another. Some people have even labeled singers as super spreaders, uh, given the fact that proper singing technique could possibly spread it, like I just said. Um, you know, I often joke with our choir that their consonants should be so good that I am wiping their saliva off my face at the end of a choral anthem. And obviously, that's an exaggeration, but it illustrates the very real concerns that we have about singing. Keeping all this in mind, and per the direction of the Archdiocese of Chicago, congregational singing at Mass will be suspended until further notice. That's not to say that there won't be music at Mass. However, the music will either be instrumental music played by the organ or the piano, or of course some music that is intentionally unfamiliar. So you'll start to hear a lot of antiphons, perhaps some familiar hymn tunes with unfamiliar words. Um, once again, all of this is uh, keeping the safety of all those involved in mind. Uh, choirs are not allowed until further notice because of what I just, what I just said. Um, and instead, a single cantor and organist will provide music at all of our masses. Now, some of the parts that are usually sung, such as the Gloria, what we call the Ordinary of the Mass, the Sanctus, the Memorial Acclamation, will probably be spoken to allow the, the congregation to participate. Um, some of the other parts, such as the Responsorial Psalm, which is normally a call and response, will actually be sung all the way through. You know, the Psalms were intended to be sung, so we want to, you know, maintain that, that level of liturgy while still keeping everyone's safety in mind. Um, here at St. Benedict, we're actually going to make a little bit of a change as, where, as far as where our, our musicians are located. You can see I'm up here in the choir loft, which is actually originally the intended space for both the choir and, and the singers. Uh, so we're actually going to be moving a keyboard and eventually the organ up here until further notice. Um, the current directives from the Archdiocese uh, require at least 10, ideally 15 feet between a singer and any other person. Uh, it is exactly 22 feet from this ledge all the way down to the floor. Um, so once again, we're trying to go a little bit farther than the prescribed safety guidelines just to make sure that everyone involved is safe. Um, now I know that these changes are going to be difficult at first, but we're going to do our best to make these as seamless as possible and to make sure that Mass is still a prayerful and spiritual experience to everyone involved. Um, you know, as more research and information regarding singing becomes available, it's my hope that we'll be going back to, to normal or pre-COVID, uh, a pre-COVID way of celebrating Mass. Uh, however, we just don't have enough information now. Now, several have asked about our upcoming concert series. 
Um, at this point, I think it goes without saying that the concert series this year is not going to look like a concert series that we've ever had in years past. Um, you know, however, unlike many organizations who are canceling their series outright, I really feel strongly that we're going to press forward with something. Let me say that again. We're going to press forward with something. As I said at the beginning of the video, the, the situation continues to change and we keep learning every day about what we can and cannot do with this virus. However, I think that art, especially music, is so integral to the fiber of our being. Both the community of St. Benedict, our church, the Catholic Church, and us as humans. With that in mind, we are going to press forward with a concert series. Now this concert series is going to be a little bit different, like I said, than years past. Um, it will almost certainly include several digital and virtual events. Um, our largest event, the Parish Christmas Concert, uh, which would normally have over 500 guests, over 120 performers on stage, will have to be completely rethought and revamped. However, I know that with the ingenuity and the talent that we have here at St. Benedict, we'll be able to put together an, unforg an unforgettable season that will be like nothing we've ever done before. You know, it's exciting and terrifying all at once, but I'm really excited by the creativity that can potentially be forged from adverse times, like the times we find ourselves in, that we find ourselves in today. Um, all that in mind, I did also want to take a moment to thank all the parishioners, our patrons, specifically those that support our music ministry, either on a monthly basis or on a weekly basis. Um, it's just amazing the amount of generosity we have here at St. Benedict, and I am so grateful to be part of our community for that and, of course, for other reasons, but it's just, it's so amazing. And so thank you. Thank you so much for, for, um, for supporting our music program. You know, I think it goes without saying that these donations in this moment mean more than they ever would during a normal concert series. Um, and that's why if you have not set up a monthly donation for our music program, I invite you to think about doing so. Um, I know that times are hard, people are losing their jobs, and the economy is, well, not good at the moment. But, but if you are able, consider supporting our music program because, like I said, we could use it in this moment. Thank you. Thank you. Finally, I do just have a final request for you. Um, you know, the power of prayer is real. And we see that every day in our Catholic faith and in our lives. So just please continue to pray for our music program here at St. Benedict. Um, during these uncertain times, we know that anything is possible with God. And I hope that we'll come out the end of this better, stronger, and with some pretty cool creative ideas as to how we celebrate Mass and how we make music together as a community here at St. Benedict. Thank you for listening, and have a wonderful day.